During Manchester United's pre-season tour this summer, pretty much every single goal was scored or assisted by an academy graduate. Of the 27 goals we've scored this year in all competitions, 26 of them have been scored or assisted by an academy graduate. The academy has always been at the core of Manchester United as a club. So to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer flying to Astana with an 18-man squad that has 14 teenagers in it, 10 of which could make their first team debut, it's an exciting game, especially considering it could have been a dead rubber given that we've already qualified. But not every one of you will know about these teenagers. So what this video is designed to do is to help you with a bit of insight into why you should be excited about seeing a lot of these young players play. Now, a big shout out to Tracy, who is at Girl on United on Twitter for helping me with some real insight into how these youngsters have been playing this season. But let's get straight into it. Before I get started, I want to let you know about some cracking new content that's launched this week on The Athletic, a new series of podcasts, completely free to listen. Don't even need a subscription for these. And there's one with David Ornstein and Mark Chapman that I will definitely be listening to every single week. There's also some cracking content on there, like a long interview by Adam Crafton with Antonio Valencia. Flew out and stayed with him for two days in Ecuador. Really, really good read. It's all ad-free, top quality content, top quality writers. As I said, free podcast now as well. Make sure you follow the link in the description. You get your 30-day free trial, make the most of it, and you get 50% off an annual subscription for cracking content like this. It's definitely worth it. But let's run through all of these youngsters, starting in goal. And the first up is Matej Kovar. The 19-year-old has played 10 times this season and has got six clean sheets. He joined United in January 2018, made his under-18s debut in February 2018, made his under-23s debut in April 2018. And he really is highly rated, by some considered to be a potential successor to David De Gea, a very vocal goalkeeper with a strong presence in the box and a sort of natural shot stopper. He's got a great set of skills. Now, Lee Grant will probably start the game, but Kovar really is one to watch for the future. Next up is Max Taylor. The 19-year-old centre-back could be making his Manchester United first team debut, but for Max Taylor, it's not about the football. You would have read about his story this week, and it really is an incredible and inspirational story. Because Max, back in February 2019, was diagnosed with testicular cancer and underwent chemotherapy treatment. But only a few months later, in October, he returned to play for the reserves. And then a month later, he's in the first team squad flying out to Astana and could make his first team debut. It's such an incredible story of recovery. And if you watch his interview on the BBC, I would encourage you to do so, where he discusses the diagnosis, the treatment, his recovery. He said that he doesn't want to be remembered for this, but it's going to help make him a better man because of it. I mean, that's the perfect mentality to have. And it's incredible that he's been able to recover to this point so quickly. And imagine that he does get to make his debut. That would be a special moment for him. But what a story of recovery so far for Max Taylor. Another centre-back in the squad is 17-year-old Ted Mengi. He's played 14 times this season for the under-18s and in the second Premier League. And he's a very powerful, dominant centre-back. Which will be music to all of you. That's exactly the sort of centre-back he is. Very comfortable playing in age groups above himself has real leadership qualities about his game, and he has captained the team as well, so he's got those leadership qualities. Developed a fantastic partnership with Deshaun Bernard, which I'll speak about next, but Mengi is one to certainly watch. And I think it'll be Tuan Zebe who starts at centre-back as long as he's recovered from his hip problem. And if he does, who partners him? That's the real question, but Mengi is certainly a contender for that position. Or maybe it'll be Deshaun Bernard there, as I said, he's partnered Mengi, a great partnership. He's 19, Dijon. And what's good about his game is his reading of the game. A very intelligent defender. Whereas someone like Mengi is more dominant, someone like Bernard is more of a reader of a game. So that's why they've worked so well as a partnership. And maybe it will be him that partners Tuan Zebe at centre-back. Or maybe Tuan Zebe won't start at all. But as I said, two very different styles of defenders there in Mengi and Bernard. But both exciting prospects. And next up, we've got Ethan Laird, the 18-year-old fullback. 
He spent a lot of last season out injured, but to a lot of you, it won't be a surprise to see Ethan's name on this list. He's already been training with the first team this year, and as Brandon Williams has shown, fullbacks coming through, very exciting indeed. And Ethan Laird is very powerful, very comfortable playing left back and right back as well. So I think he will get the nod, and it'll be interesting to see if he does play. Can he come into the squad and be an understudy to Wan Bissaka? What does that mean for Diogo Dalot? I'm not sure. But after years of having basically no fullbacks, we've got some good ones in the first team, some good prospects coming through. Brandon Williams is one of them, Ethan Laird is another. Moving on to central midfield, and one of the players I'm most excited about seeing, and that's Dylan Levitt. The 19 year old Welsh midfielder was part of that Euro 2020 squad that qualified under Ryan Giggs. At 19, He's a very good ball-playing central midfielder. He's partnered James Garner in midfield quite a lot. I'll speak about James Garner later, but we all know who he is. But Levitt is the more attacking of the two, but he's also very capable of going back. There's certainly a lot of noise around Levitt at the moment, having broken through into that Wales team, and deservedly so. He's having a fantastic season. It'll be interesting to see if he starts, but I think he should, and I'd kind of be surprised if he didn't. But maybe... Solskjaer will go for Ethan Galbraith in midfield. The 18-year-old has already made his international debut for Northern Ireland. And there's a lot of noise around Galbraith at the moment as well because he's in such a good run of form. He's got an excellent long-range strike in his locker. He's a powerful central midfielder sometimes. In other games, he does disappear. But at that age, you're not going to get that sort of consistency. But right now, he's in a very rich vein of form. So maybe... It will be Galbraith that starts, or maybe Garner, or Levitt, or maybe all three. There's genuine options in central midfield there, which is not something you can say about Manchester United too often. But with United so low in confidence and quality in midfield, that's where the real opportunity lies in this game. For Levitt, for Galbraith, and for Garner. If any of them can come in, and it'll probably be Garner who's most ready, but Galbraith and Levitt will be ready and hope to take their opportunity if they get it. And there's still more competition for that position because maybe it will be Arno Puigmal who is given the nod. The 18-year-old Spanish midfielder is a very different midfielder to the rest of them. Far more technically gifted, excellent at set pieces, a really gifted, naturally talented footballer. Very different, as I said, to Levitt, to Galbraith and to Garner. So there's options, no matter where you look in midfield there. But Puigmal is more... I suppose capable of those special moments. I wouldn't say he, he presents himself as a dominant midfielder, but he played right back covering for Ethan Laird's injury quite a lot last season. That's made him a more rounded individual. And obviously he's learned that defensive side of the game as well, which has made him a far more complete type of midfielder rather than somebody who specifically relies on going forward. But it'll be interesting, as I said, to see who starts in midfield because there are plenty of options there. Very exciting ones too. And of course, James Garner is one of those options. Now, the 18-year-olds, we already know him already. It was in this pre-season tour. He was fantastic. Scored, I think, a couple of goals. Certainly scored at least one goal. But he was on the pre-season tour last year. Broke through. Came through. Made his first team debut against Crystal Palace. Only a couple of minutes, but he made his debut. And he's continued that run of form that's earned him the plaudits to maybe consider him the most ready out of all of these players there, the most ready to break through into that first team, like Brandon Williams has. James Garner, every time I've seen him when he's come on for United this season, he's composed. And I think he might have, did he start away in the Europa League already? Let me know in the comments there, I think he did. But Garner looks very composed every time he's on the ball. You can't say that about many United central midfielders. So we do have a plethora of options there. Maybe a couple will start. Of course, a couple will start, but I don't know who. But there's real options there. And that's exciting because it's such a weak position for United. This is when one of these kids needs to break through like Brandon Williams has done at left back. Moving on to attackers, and probably the most exciting attacker is Lagi Ramazani. The 18-year-old has played 14 times this season, got nine goals and two assists. But he's played centre forward, left wing, and right wing. He's played them all, and he's done it extremely, extremely well. He's a small but feisty sort of attacker. Runs tirelessly, 
gets a lot of fouls from defenders because he's that sort of attacker. And with United on the wing, we could definitely do with more inspiration, certainly on the right wing. So Ramazani is one that I hope will start because he's a very exciting looking prospect going forward. Can be a little bit selfish at times, but when you're in goal scoring form like he is, you can't blame him for being selfish. And the other option we've got up there on the wing is Damani Bughal Mella. The 19 year old has played 10 times, got three goals and four assists this season. He's a regular. He works hard, works tirelessly, goes for the full 90 minutes and does work well in a pressing sort of system. So in terms of players suiting Solskjaer's style, Mella ticks that box. So maybe we can see Ramazani on one wing and Mella on the other wing. But that, again, like central midfield, is an exciting prospect. I know that playing all these kids and there's not much experience in there, Lingard, Grant, who else? Tuan Zebe? Probably they, they are the only, maybe first team, experienced players it's a young squad and it might not work but I love to see Solskjaer giving these kids the opportunity and the likes of Ramazani and Mella up front they look exciting too and then there are some familiar faces as well Angel Gomez is in the squad we haven't seen much of him this season after what was an exciting pre-season we thought we'd see more of him but I think injuries may have sort of hampered him somewhat but Gomez, will he start? Maybe an attacking midfield, depends on the formation. Then there's Tahith Chong, who, I'll be honest, out of all the kids that have broken through into the first team, he strikes me as the one that is the least ready. His game really does depend on basically running past a defender. And he, when he can't do it, he can't do much else. So I'd like to see him get more opportunities. Clearly the opportunity is here for Chong, but maybe it'll be Ramazani and Men. I don't know. We've got options, and then you've got Greenwood, who you can clearly see how naturally talented he is at just finding the back of the net. That goal that he scored against Sheffield United, sliding in, inside the six-yard box, I think it was. Can't really remember Rashford scoring those types of goals. Rashford scores cracking goals. He's a great all-rounded player. But you can see why Solskjaer is so excited about Greenwood. Scores with his left, scores with his right, composed, scrappy goals, seems to have the lot. Very much looking forward to seeing what he continues to do this season. And maybe he'll start here, or maybe he'll be left on the bench for the other younger kids to get their chances. And maybe Greenwood will come on like he has done for United's first team already on more than one occasion this season and score the winner. Let's see what goes on, but there's definitely some exciting options in attack as well as midfield and defence. Going into this Astana game with United already qualified, it felt like a dead rubber. But instead, Solskjaer is playing the kids, giving them the opportunities, and all of a sudden I'm extremely excited for this game to see what happens. I reckon a lot of you are feeling the exact same way because playing the kids, bringing through the youth, it's cliche at United, but it's true. It is in the core and the fabric of the club, and some of our best players have come from our academy. So who's to say that that can't happen moving forward? And you don't know if you don't give them the opportunity. Now, towards the end of this video, I found out that Solskjaer has confirmed that Dijon Bernard, that Dylan Levitt and Ethan Laird will all make their debuts for United tomorrow. Will there be others? We'll find out. But United's future, if some of these kids are involved in it, that will be exciting. We've seen how good Brandon Williams has come through. Mason Greenwood, Rashford in recent years. Maybe some of these are the future stars of United. And we're going to see their first game in United shirt on Thursday. Let me know which players you're excited about seeing in the comments below, as always. And if this video did help, subscribe to United People's TV because that will help us. Until next time, though, take it easy.